Actually, the thing that turned me on to that was uh, I spoke to Denham Harmon's family. So yeah. Denham Harmon, you may know him. He's the father of the oxidative stress theory of aging. Yeah. And, and so he, I, I was fortunate to win an award with his name on it. And I went out there and his family were very generous to host me. And he was still alive at the time. He passed away a few years ago, but he was still healthy and going into work at 92. And so I said, what is, what's his secret? Oh, lipoic acid. Uh -huh. I, I thought, well, at the very least it didn't hurt him. So again, yeah. that-, that I, I take it every day. Yeah. It's, it's, if you understand what it does, it's basically one of the most powerful antioxidants that helps boost glutathione, which is detoxifier. It's anti-inflammatory. It helps your mitochondria. It helps detoxify from metals. It, it's sort of a, uh, helps with blood sugar and diabetics. It helps with diabetic neuropathy. I mean, it's a really yeah. well-studied molecule. Right. Yeah, and it's all about the mitochondria. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I would say that too. So mitochondria are, are a part of the cell. So our bodies, our bodies made of um, organ systems, which billions are made of tissues. Billions and billions tissues. of cells. Well, yes, billions and billions of cells, but organs like your intestinal tract, tissues that make up, the t intestinal tract, and then you get down to cells. Cells are, the, are really the smallest level that medicine really looks to to find out how something works, or if a medication works, or if uh, if we've got an illness, what that illness, where it comes from, and how we need to treat it. So, when we're talking about mitochondria, we're talking about subcellular organelles, little pieces, and it looks kind of like um, a, a jujube or one of those little oval oval licorices. Well, it has little... So if you had the ability to magically pull a single cell out of the body, and there are billions mm -hmm. in the pile, you mm -hmm. just pull one of them out, mm -hmm. and then you put it under a microscope and look at it. Mm -hmm. Within that cell, there are some larger things like uh, electrons and protons and they're smaller but that's okay within the cell within they're, the cell there's... they're larger than the mitochondria no they're not okay they're smaller so that's why I'm, I'm trying to learn so this. the mitochondria is an organelle meaning an organ within the cell okay. and it it is like our lungs it takes um it takes oxygen from from our lungs it goes to the circulation to our cells it takes oxygen and it takes water, and it makes energy. And then the energy then is used to for our bodies on a macroscopic level, a big level. All that energy is made so that our cells live and then our body lives. So it then excretes carbon dioxide. So you have billions of little energy factories. Right. And some of those factories are being created anew. Mm -hmm. And some are aging and dying. Right. And that's the process of life. All, cell, all cells go through a process. You don't have one cell that lives forever. In fact, that's the problem with cancer cells. They live forever and keep growing, keep growing and taking over. Every cell Squeezing has a lifespan. Cell. Yes. So you want your cells to live their proper lifespan and to live well, to be healthy cells. So, so the, like your epithelial cells, mm -hmm. there are a certain number of those that get replaced every so many days. Right. They they are made in the dermis and they and they live there uh -huh. and then they die and then are are uh, uh, kind of go up as squamous cells and then they're exfoliated. They come off when you wash your face. Yeah. So so, so you basically get new skin. you get new skin. Yes. I believe every 90 days as I as I remember. But I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to uh we didn't research that part today. Yeah. yeah, we didn't review it. So, so, so mitochondria are the organelles in the cell. Right. And what do they do? How do they're, they do? They run your metabolism. Basically, they run the calories, how your calories are burned, and how much energy you have overall. All of them work together to make you a living creature with energy. And they can use energy from food and can use energy and make it make energy out of food, and then excrete all the all of the uh, byproducts. So, so, <laughs> so, so they are, they are truly, I mean, they, they've used this as an advertising deal, but, mm -hmm. but they truly are the uh, smallest form of um, 
energy production in our bodies. And interestingly enough, they are the genetics that give us mitochondria come from our mothers, only our mothers. So, so, our, so what you're saying is we're pretty useless. For mitochondria, you are. <laughs> for reproduction, you're not. <laughs> well, yeah. We just, but yeah. Just, just for mitochondria. Right. Just the mito- it's just the most amazing thing that, that we can follow our mitochondria back to our great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmothers. And that's how many times Ancestry.com and the, uh, can find our... and me and those things. Yeah. They're can, using mitochondrial traces? Mitochondrial DNA to... to to get back to who we're related to. Okay. And so our metabolism of our mother and our grandmother and our great grandmother has been passed down to us. So and, that's kind of an. And there are, are markers in our individual cells mm-hmm. that connect us back those generations. And they can trace that now? They have yes. A, yes, they can. So, our mito- so if you look at it like the mitochondria gives you metabolism. You can thank your, if you have a good one, you can thank your mother and her mother and her mother for your good metabolism. And you can, I mean, a, a metabolism that makes energy and you don't collect a lot of fat. You just use everything that you eat and make energy. That's a good metabolism. So if you've got a good one, thank thank your mother and her mother and her mother. Grandmother and great-grandmother, yes. So when we're looking Sturdy at my... Mitoc- country women all. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> So, um, so that, that's just one of the interesting facts about mitochondria, but mitochondria um, actually have to be fed with good, healthy foods, and they have to be fed with, they have to be protected from environmental problems, the environmental problems uh, like radiation and um, pollution and smoking and too much alcohol. So we do best and protect our mitochondria the best way by avoiding all of the bad things, but you can't avoid life, you can't avoid the sun, you can't avoid living where you live and absorbing pollution. It's everywhere. So you're always to- toxins going... Toxins in the air get absorbed into absorbed the mitochondria, through, through, into the Through your lungs and then are, are damaging... Circulate with the blood. To your mitochondria. To the mitochondria. So it's kind of it's kind of like looking at, you know, you're taking things apart down to the smallest level. Yeah. And everything affects your big the big part of your body, the whole body affects each level of your body, tissues and cells and and mitochondria. So so help me understand. So so the in the blood, the blood is carrying oxygen and sugar to each of the individual mm-hmm. cells. Mm-hmm. Those cells then take that oxygen and sugar to produce energy mm-hmm. to do the things that they do, right. which is it's like turn over dominoes. The cell at that level turns over the domino, which turns over a bigger domino, which turns over bigger. So your Say, muscle it depends will move on and what kind of specialized cells cells they are. Each one has a different, each one has a different role in your body. Okay. So eat, but each one needs energy. Right. There's not a cell in your body that doesn't need energy unless. They're dead cells, you know, like that your hair. Right. You know, not your hair follicle, but your hair. So every cell that's living needs it. So what they found is that we need to have certain nutrients to help our our uh, mitochondria live and to be healthy. So this is where the catchword came in. Okay. So to keep your mitochondria healthy, you have to have um, – resveratrol and L-carnitine and uh, N-acetylcysteine and all of these different pieces of our food to be healthy. So that's what we're, they're talking about when they're saying, keep your mitochondria healthy. So in a lot of the podcasts that we do, you make the argument that the nutritional <laughs> needs of Americans are not being met adequately by our food supply, partly yep. because so much of our food supply is sugar. Mm-hmm. And so much of it is pre-processed. Mm-hmm. And we don't eat enough mm-hmm. fresh things that come right out of the garden and right out of the ground. Mm-hmm. But then you also add that our ground and gardens here in the Midwest <laughs> of the United States aren't as nutritious as they need to be. They don't have every nutrient that we need. Right. Like, such as iodine. We don't have iodine in our, in so our ground. there are specific foods that are heavier with certain elements mm-hmm. of, of nutrition. Like, like meat has more L-carnitine in it, a steak. Right, right. And we need, the L-carnitine is one of the things that feeds the mitochondria. Right. That's true. So if you're not, if, if your mitochondria are not healthy, they may need more L-carnitine. Right. So if you eat more meat, 
that will lean help. meat without the fat. Lean meat without the fat, mm -hmm. okay. And then omega three, which is like fish oil. Fish oil or fish. Salmon. Salmon and oily fish, like cod. As opposed to flaky fish. Like white fish. White fish. So resveratrol is the one everybody loves because it's in grape skins and it's in wine. So they red always, wine. Red wine. Red wine. So, because the white wine, they take the skins off, right? right. I don't know that part. <laughs> about I don't wine. know how they make the wine, but I know that everybody says red wine is better for you. Right. So. Right. And that's the resveratrol. And then alpha lipoic acid, uh, you can take it as a supplement, but it's in kale and d deep green leafy vegetables. But you can take all of these as supplements. You can, yes. So, you can. so if you are eating a, an unhealthy diet, either by necessity or choice, many of us eat them by choice. I know. You know, we get addicted to sugar. We eat donuts and things that we're not supposed to eat. For our health, mm -hmm. and if you or we're addicted to it because we've had it for so long that we'll we'll go through a kind of a uh, withdrawal if we don't have it. Today. And so, if you're doing that, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you're obese in particular as a result of that, your cellular structure, your mitochondria are not as healthy, and you get an accumulated level of damage that we call the aging process. Right. As you get older, your cells are less healthy; more of them die off, and you become more susceptible and fragile to different illnesses that eventually will kill you if, if they overwhelm the correct. system. So to fight the accumulated damage, to reduce it or block mm -hmm. it, if you took supplements or if you ate these foods that put more antioxidants into your uh, mitochondria, mm -hmm. you'd be healthier, you'd live longer. Right. That's the argument in the advertising. That's, that's the argument, and that's what everybody's kind of pinning their product on. I, I don't want you to be... I, I don't want you to say these products aren't good because they're saying it. It's just that they're just using an advertising propaganda. method, yeah. propaganda, to get you to buy their whatever. Well, but it doesn't mean you can't eat the food that contains these supp these supplements right. or these these nutrients. So if you wanted to have healthy mitochondria from the from the get go, say you were a mother, you wanted your child to be really healthy. Then you would have, after you're done breastfeeding, you'd breastfeed as long as possible. You would um, get milk that is from grass-fed cows because you don't want to have grain in the, grain for the cows in the milk. Then you would have your child be in a great environment, healthy, you know, filter the air in your house. I mean, it's really hard to hide from our and, and normal expensive. environment. I mean, if you want to really buy expensive. milk from grass-fed cows, I know. you have to pay top dollar to get that milk from I those I never cows. said any of this was cheap. <laughs> oh, well, but, it, but that's one reason why people tend not to do it right. so readily because they can't afford it. I know. Or and, it's too and, complicated. And that's, that's part of survival. But a less complicated thing to do is, is to take the supplements, which are the condensed essence mm -hmm. uh, of the... Uh, or just eat well. But, but just, if you can't afford to. Well, we're talking about babies. You know, you you can eat less meat from a grass-fed cow. It will be the same price as a huge amount of meat from a non-grass-fed cow. You just eat less. Well, but We don't need all the, the calories we But my argument eat. is that the way our society is physically structured, mm -hmm. there are neighborhoods where poor people are concentrated, right. where the grocery stores don't offer these options. Or if they do, they offer them at such an expense level, those people can't afford them. But in, thankfully, in our in the United States, we have food stamps. And food stamps are for fresh foods. They have food stamps for fresh foods. I mean, all of my patients, when I, when I had my Meacham Park Clinic, came in in the wintertime where I, I couldn't even afford the grapes. And they came in with all kinds of great, healthy fruit and vegetables. So we do provide for people if they want to use them for healthy things. Okay. If they if they qualify for food stamps, if if we're talking about really poor people. Yeah. But in the middle class, oftentimes there's not enough money for that kind of thing. And it's a matter of choice and education. Yes. Our argument is that if you have this education, you might make better choices. Which is to eat healthier, better food. Like Don't eat McDonald's. Green. Eat eat grapes and, and oranges. You know, so, I mean. <laughs> and if you won't or can't, or even if you do, it might be beneficial to supplement your diet with these specifically reduced or condensed uh, ingredients that your body needs to feed the mitochondria. Right. And the other things you can do, which is usually some, somewhat free, is exercise. 
Somewhat free. Somewhat free. It depends yeah. on where you exercise. But because that helps your body excrete the, the more you exercise. It, it brings in you. oxygen. And helps excrete all of the, the toxins and the dead cells mm -hmm. that aren't working correctly. Yeah, that's true. Okay. But And so that is one of the methods of being healthy. But also another method of keeping your mitochondria healthy is trying to decrease the stress in your life, which I don't know how you do that. Do yoga or something and get rid of unhealthy food, get rid of smoking, get rid of uh, alcohol, get rid of toxins in your environment if you can. Clean with vinegar and water instead of those chemical sprays like fantastic. I'm not, I mean, I use fantastic sometimes, but I mean, some of those things that are, that are uh, expensive and have lots of toxins in them. So cleaning supplies can be, by, uh, you can use um, uh, bicarbonate of soda to, to scrub things. You can, I mean, you can use healthy cleansers if you choose to keep your environment healthy. So there are ways to keep your mitochondria healthy that aren't expensive. Good. So that so that's helpful, but we do we are going to be talking about the answer to sick mitochondria and what you can do to make them more healthy specifically what foods and what supplements you can use to cleanse your mitochondria. Taking alpha lipoic acid. How many how much? Me too. 500. At, at least five yeah, it's about 500 I guess. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So I'm doing ALA a one gram morning and night for my body weight. I'm about in 205 right now. Uh, so my kids are getting it once a day. Uh, it's just in the morning. They didn't used to get it, but I've added it in recently. Yeah, well, it's actually, it, it seemed to be helpful uh, for viral infections. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh, and you know how um, I think a lot of people would have read in the New York Times or elsewhere that a loss of smell is a potential symptom of, of COVID-19. And I looked up what, what's the cure or what's a potential cure for that. And it was alpha lipoic acid, which was great news because I was already taking it. Nice. And uh, I'll tell you very briefly why I started taking it. There's a, there was a scientist who's now unfortunately passed away, but he was, his name is Denham Harmon. And he was known for uh, the free radical theory of right. aging. Famous guy. And I, yeah, I managed to uh, meet at least his family. Mm -hmm. He was in his nineties um, and at home when I visited, but uh, they said his family let me in on a little secret, which was that uh, Denim has been taking, had been taking this uh, alpha lipoic acid for years, most of his life, um, mostly thinking that it was an antioxidant. And uh, he worked until his uh, early 90s. And so I figured, well, if it didn't hurt him, what's the least that can? <laughs> the N equals one guinea pig, but it was a really smart guinea pig. I like that. <laughs> uh, what, what about uh, within, within alpha lipoic acid, there, there's the normal cheap stuff. There's, R, there's also our alpha lipoic acid, which is racemic. And, and the first guy to launch that came to me in, I want to say 2000, uh, before anyone knew what I was doing and we talked about launching something. And then there's also potassium, uh, our alpha lipoic acid. Do you go for the fancy stuff or the cheap stuff? Uh, mine's the L, so just the bulk cheap the stuff. The cheap stuff, okay, cool. Is it, am I wasting my money? I don't think you're wasting your money, but there's, there's more efficacy from the R versus S form. Uh, 